Hello and good today, when it's now or any day that's already been, because sure enough, here we are, for some of us, again. But I have to say, you guys are not making this any easier. I was really hoping we could put this whole sun issue to rest. I thought, hey, maybe I'll throw it out there, we'll see what happens. I even received the most comments yet. But not one answer solved it. What is the probability that the sun will rise tomorrow? Out of 415 comments, I decided to take each one, categorize it into the appropriate group based on what I thought you were really trying to say, and then respond to it. Granted, I took some liberties and I may have made some mistakes, but I'm feeling pretty confident I can argue my position if I happen to have any challengers, but so far, not one sufficient answer. First, I made a tag cloud of all of the words in the comments in case anything popped out. Anybody notice any compelling answers here? Zero Card Zero and Oratory 1989, you guys were all over this one. In your case, amidst the argument, I did my best to determine that what you were really arguing about here is the definition of a sunrise. What is the definition of a sunrise? A significant percentage of you left comments pertaining to the definition of a sunrise, around 23%. The sun doesn't rise, we move around it, the sun never rises, the earth rotates, so on and so forth. Those of you in this group got stuck trying to find a definition or were looking for a way out an honest method to circumvent the problem. Hermeneutically speaking, the absurdity group had about 70 people. As a pan-groupist, I consider myself an active member of this creative group. We believe that the world is absurd and, like the definitionist, must use our imagination to conjure up unique ways of expressing ourselves when presented with ideas that seem futile, trivial, pointless, meaningless, and yes, absurd. So sadly, we were not able to participate due to that handicap. There was also a notable 28 escapist. This group chose to answer the question by asking a question. In most cases, the subject matter of these questions warrant inclusion into the absurdist group, though none appeared to be asking for clarification as a precursor to an actual answer that would be forthcoming. And thus, we must eliminate this entire group too, in order to determine the probability that the sun will rise tomorrow, at least until you get your own questions answered first. Only three emotional responses, a feeling so strong that you just can't explain it. We must consider that however true or false an emotional response may be, simply trying not to worry about it for reasons we can't understand isn't going to work for me, and apparently it didn't work for 99.5% of you. Another large sector involves non-answer statements and replies. If a reply revealed itself as making a claim in and of itself, I moved it to the appropriate group. But of course, a non-answer is a non-answer, and thus, we must consider these comments for another day. Finally. The last group standing, my favorite group and the largest group with 110 members, the Scientific Experiential Group. With a wide range of answers, scientists typically rely on empirical data related to what we have already seen in the past as the basis for what will happen in the future. In-depth descriptions of the possible large-scale astronomical events that could occur, sometimes relying on a logically exhaustive list of possibilities, others leaning on the theories of physics that happen to be in fashion today, all the way through acknowledging that we don't know enough physics to determine it, even attempts at calculating mathematical breakdowns of the actual probability. All of which, epistemologically speaking, rely on a three-dimensional linguistic articulation of irrational, unjustified, and untrue set of beliefs, which means we've got nothing here. Care to argue? <laughs>